FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. This episode of the Financial Survival Network is brought to you in part by Sandstorm Gold Royalties. Sandstorm Gold Royalties is a different kind of gold company. They purchase royalties on select mining operations and receive a percentage of the revenue in return. Sandstorm now has a portfolio of over 185 gold royalties around the world. See how gold royalties differ from other gold mining investments at sandstormgold.com. That's sandstormgold.com. Sandstorm Gold Royalties trades on the TSX as SSL and on the New York Stock Exchange American as SAND. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is 11119. That is January 11th, 2019. Well, we've had some movement here in the precious metals prices. Hey, first, uh, it's time for another Triple Lutz Report, and this is episode 465. It's been a while since we've done one, but so much has happened, I really felt that it was required. There's just between Ruth Bader Ginsburg, or as I call her, Ruth Bernie Ginsburg, for all we know, she could have been dead for a year already, although she did show up a few times, but... Like I said, for all we know, she could have been dead for months. So Ruth Bernie Ginsburg, you know, looks like she's on her way out. Hey, we don't wish ill upon anyone. But the woman's 85, multiple recurrences of cancer. And you just can't, uh, I mean, you need fully functioning people on the Supreme Court. And that might get rid of uh, five or six of these judges. I mean, if you look, <laughs> you know, Clarence Thomas is getting on in years. Breyer's 79. And he looks like he's pretty vital. He looks like he's pretty with it. Sotomayor is only 61 or 62. And she is a brittle diabetic. One of these diabetics who is always having episodes and always always having issues. She fell down a while ago. She had an insulin reaction. I don't know. When you're a type one diabetic, life is very tough. Heart goes out to her. Uh, whatever you might feel about her political leanings. And there's a lot to, lot to feel strongly about. Uh, she's a piece of work for sure. Uh, you know, as a human being, we all can relate to to what she's going through, because we've all had relatives and friends who've uh, gone through similar illnesses. Don't wish that upon anyone. And now that that's out of the way, precious metals were up substantially at the beginning of the day, knocked it down. I'm doing this at Friday at 4.10 p.m. Uh, gold's right around that 1288 mark, up a buck and a half. Silver, 15.57, up four cents. It looks like it's going to hit a wall here and perhaps retrace, or it's gingerly approaching the $1,300 mark. My opinion, if gold goes over $1,300, silver breaks $16 on the same day or within one day of each, that is powerful confirmation that this rally is real, probably going to continue. If it doesn't make it, then it's probably going to take another dip Probably not a substantial dip. One thing that's interesting, it loses $7 one day, gains 8 the next. It's behaving a lot like it did in 2010 and 11. So something to watch out for. The mining stocks have been performing very, very strongly. I mean, if we look at the, you know, we just have to look at the uh, GDX and the GDXJ. They've been very strong lately. Even today, they're not up a lot. Uh, the GDXJ, you, know, you can look them up, but since I mentioned them, I'll talk about them. GDX 2109, GDXJ 3071. One's up nine cents, the other's up a penny. But the stocks themselves have really been strong recently, surprisingly strong, and that could be a sign of things to come. I think they've got one more dip, is my honest opinion, but. One never knows about these things, d does one. So getting back to Ruth Bader Ginsburg, 85 years old, multiple recurrences of cancer. The only reason that she is holding on 
is because she doesn't want Trump to appoint her successor. Now, this woman should have resigned at the beginning of Obama's first term when it was all Democratic, all three branches of government. Take that, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. There are three branches of government, the legislative, the executive, and the judiciary. There are two houses in the chamber, the Senate, uh, rather, I'm sorry, there are two chambers in the Congress, the Senate and the House, okay? And there are 50, currently 50 states, 5 states in the union, not 57 like Obama said 10 years ago on the campaign trail. I know he was very tired, and you could just forget how many states really belong to the United States. <laughs> it is the United States of America, right? 50, 5 Whatever myth is, myth, whatever numis, numerological, numerological studies you want to take, analysis, it's five, 50, 5 plus 0, it's 5. I don't know what 5 means, but look, it doesn't matter. In any event, she should have left. At 75, she was already in bad health. Now, I know they say, well, the Ruth Bader Ginsburg workout, you know, it's amazing. People half her age can't keep up, all right? A, that is propaganda garbage. The woman has been diminishing over time. Quite obviously, she has. The fact that she spoke out during the election and soundly against Trump is an indication that she was losing her faculties. She would have never done that in her heyday. So really, somebody had to be there to tell her, Ruth, it's time to leave. But nobody was. This is why these people are unfit to govern. The right's unfit to govern for a whole nother reason. But you got to make way for the new blood. If you look at what's going on in the run up to the 2020 election, you got Hillary, you got Bernie, Boiney, and you've got Joe Biden. And Look, I respect the, my elders. I think you gain wisdom over time, but there is a time, and it's probably not that far away for myself, but if you're in your 60s, you're in your 70s, there's a time where your faculties start to diminish. It's unusual that they don't in your 70s. And clearly, Hillary's have. Bernie, he was always a wacko, so it's hard to know what's going on with him. Joe Biden, his faculties diminished many, many years ago. He's always been a wacko and a gaff master and creepy and gropy and touchy and feely with the women. He has no chance of becoming president. I don't really want to get into the whole presidential thing because I just don't think it really matters that much at this particular point in time. Uh, one thing I did want to tell you, I will be at the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference, also known as VRIC. I am really, really looking forward to it. It's in Vancouver. Uh, it starts out on January the 20th, if I'm not mistaken. And you can, you can get tickets to it. You just go to uh, cambridgehouse.com. Um, really, it's just a great event. I really enjoy it. I interviewed tons of people there. Guys like Rick Rule, Marin Katusa, all of these people are there and they're just good friends. They become really good friends. Yeah, it's on the 20th to the 21st. I'm also attending the Metals Investor Conference and that's a few days earlier. I'm going out there on the 17th. You know, it is such a pain in the neck flight from uh, New York, uh, from from Florida, especially New York, you could get direct flights. From Florida, you can't. And literally, it is the farthest flight, farthest flight in North America. No, I haven't been drinking. I just can't keep my tongue straight here. Sorry about that. So come see me. Uh, if you text me or tweet me, uh, you can email me rather, kl at kerrylutz.com. We can hook up and uh, I'll buy you lunch. You buy me lunch. We split it, whatever. I'll buy you a drink anyway. If any of you are out there or going to be in Vancouver from the 17th to the 23rd, that's how long my trip's going to be, then uh, email me, kl at kerrylutz.com. Um, we can get together, go to, I'll buy you all drinks at a bar. You know, I'd love to 
hear what you guys have to say. It's just a lot of fun. Vancouver is fun. It's a great city, not particularly in the winter, but their winters aren't that terrible. I mean, you know, it's often 50 degrees in, in uh, January. The problem being that uh, there's a lot of rain. It gets like Seattle's weather, rainforest. Right now, as we're talking, it's 52 degrees there. And that's not so bad. Like it was just 53 here in Florida. And I thought that people were going to freeze to death. They were going to have to send out emergency crews to go and rescue these people from their homes if they had no heat. I, mean, I have heat, but I have not used it yet in the new place I moved into. I've got the most amazing studio here. This studio is the best one ever, the best one I've ever built. And it's got soundproof panels. It's just got everything I want. The bathroom is right there. And my desk, I was going to get a custom made desk, but the desk uh, that I found was about 1100 bucks from, uh, it was a pre-made desk made in China, but it is just the coolest desk. I've cut holes in it. I've snaked wires all over the place. You can barely see any of my wires. It is just the best studio I've ever had. And I think I've got all the sound issues worked out. If you're having problems, you don't like the sound, I would appreciate it if you tell me. Um, you know, I, these filter settings can be a little bit difficult to master, but I've done my best that I can at it for, for the moment now. But hey, if it needs improvement, I will fix it. So make sure you let me know about the sound quality. And... And so back to Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you know, she's going to be replaced with a hard, solid conservative. If you believe QAnon, then she's going to be replaced with a female conservative. What are they going to throw at a female and keep their heads up high and not look like total hypocrites? That's what I'd like to know. Tell me your thoughts. I think her name is Amy Coney Barrett, something to that effect. She seems to be the likely one. Uh, good judge by all accounts. Like judges, uh, I have my issues with them. Basically, most judges are lazy SOBs. Many of them, I should say. The ones that aren't are frightening sometimes. They have so much power, especially in the federal courts. And a lot of that power that's just been usurped, like national injunctions. There was nothing in the Constitution that ever gave a federal judge the right to enjoin the federal government around the country. It's clearly outside their jurisdiction, but they do it. So just wanted to cover that a little bit. And uh, hey, by the way, I'm going to be working a lot closer with Jason Hartman now, being one of his investment advisors. The reason I'm doing this, quite frankly, is because I've watched every performing investment out there for the past 20 years. And there are very few people that had systems that work throughout, through thick and through thin. And Jason's real estate investment system is one of the few that has actually done it. I've tested it in good times and in bad. He's been doing it for 13, 14 years. But even before that, yes, there are down markets. 2008 and 9, a lot of real estate got hit. But the rental market barely barely sneezed, might have gone down a little bit, 5 or 10% at the peak of the so-called Great Recession. But it bounced back after that. It's better than ever. And using his system, refi till you die, having your tenant pay off your mortgage and achieving positive cash flow is one of the best ways. I've had a number of successful real estate investments over the years, none at present time. And real estate it just, when it works, it is magical. And this is a system, it's not a get-rich-quick get scam at all. It is a gradual build wealth through real estate. And there's so many levels that it works on. So, hey, if you got a question about that, just write me, kl at kerrylutz.com. Glad to help you out. And I'll give you the inside track. There's a lot of overbuilding taking place around the country. This is going to be a windfall for you single family home real estate investors like you can't even imagine. It's going to be huge, as somebody uh, likes to say. And so really, real estate, uh, if you do it right, you don't over leverage, you keep some equity, 
and you do it correctly, it's really going to serve you well. You're going to be amazed at, uh, at how well your portfolio performs anywhere from you know, around 8 10% to upwards of 20%. It's amazing how much you can make here. Um, some of the returns aren't apparent. Like for instance, as, instance, as you pay down your mortgage, that's actually profit that's accruing to you because you've, you're not even coming out of your own pocket to pay down the mortgage. Your tenant pays your mortgage. So that's a profit you're not aware of. The appreciation, the types of markets that Jason looks at are, are what you would call landlord-friendly jurisdictions and they're lateral markets. You don't see like New York prices go up 25, 30% a year for a decade. No, you see this three to 5%. Sometimes they go down a little bit. You don't even notice the, down, the downturns. The key is management and finding good tenants. And one thing I am an expert at is finding good tenants, or I shouldn't say that, weeding out the bad tenants. A little bit of time on the internet will tell you whether this person is somebody you want or want to run from. And really, I just think uh, it's it's pretty amazing, uh, amazing way to accumulate wealth. Hey, so we got this government shutdown. And look, it's like it's over the wall. The wall needs to be built here. Okay, There is no question the wall should be built. As long as we have a welfare state and it, it generously rewards illegal immigrants to the country, we must have a wall. If you want to get rid of all the entitlements for illegal aliens, then let them come in. I mean, it will still hurt the labor market, no question about it. Wages have gone down as a result of illegal immigration. It's indisputable, especially blacks have been hit hardest by it. Like I give the example, in Florida, every construction crew in the 70s, the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, was mostly black. I'd say at least 50 to 70% black. Now you look, there's hardly any blacks on any construction crews. All you see are Hispanics, and they might be legal, or they might be newly legal, or they could be illegal, either way you figure it. And this has hurt the black community more than the white community, for sure. So... Wall is required, plus the influx of criminals, whether it's MS-13. I don't know enough to say whether there are terrorists coming into the country as a result of there not being a wall. I'm not going to make that statement. I have no idea. But I do know that the number of criminals in this country from across the border is staggering. When I did a brief survey of PACER, that is the federal court docketing system that tracks all the cases, 90 plus percent of the names in the U.S. District Court criminal cases for San Diego, I think that's the Southern District of California, 95% were Hispanic surnames. Most of them are illegal aliens. Trust me on that, whether it's drug smuggling, whether it's human trafficking, whether it's just anything, it's all about the illegal immigration. And it's the same thing in the Southern District of Texas, same thing in New Mexico, same thing in Arizona. These are all illegal aliens, and they need to be kept out. Uh, they're criminals. Why do we want criminals to stay? I'm not even going to get started on the sanctuary city thing, sanctuary states, other than to say, like, we just can't have a nation of criminals or import criminals to the country. And if they cross the border illegally, they are criminals. No question about it. So let's, let's like take a closer look at this. It's not emotional. These are fact-based issues. And like I said, the Border Patrol is the biggest, the biggest police force in the United States. And most of them are on the southern border. And they're ineffectual, right? Because they're government workers. We've got a government shutdown. The workers are out of work. And 
Maybe there's a little slowdown in the TSA. Well, the TSA shouldn't have existed. Fire them all. Replace them with private security companies. They do a substandard job. Let's get some private sector substandard contractors to do what they're doing and do it cheaper. It's a multi-billion dollar agency that should never have existed. Thank you, W. Bush. A total partisan hack of the deep state. Should have never been president. A moron by every... Every uh, every stretch of the term, I mean, Martin Armstrong talks about how he was brought in there to try to economically babysit him, and he said, thanks, but no thanks. The wall's got to be built. Whether Trump does it through emergency powers, which he might, he can always do it. You know, look, there's an, here's a great article in the Washington Examiner. 8,686 child marriages, some with children as young as 14 years old, were brought into the country to be married. Now, how are we allowing this to occur? I mean, that is pedestry. It is child abuse in every way. You can't allow minors to come into the country to get, ma to get married, certainly not under the age of 17 years old. But even that, like if they want to get married to some guy, mail order bride, Fine, but you better be an adult, okay? That is a loophole that we have here that really, really, it's a universal loophole, the green card marriage scam. We've seen it over and over. There was a movie about it, right, called uh, Green Card with uh, Gerard Depardieu. It was a great movie, and uh, finally he does the right thing, and he leaves. He goes back because he doesn't want to cause trouble for his woman, who was sponsoring him, married him illegally, but uh, for the purpose, it was a sham marriage, a fraudulent marriage. And the fact is, the uh, authorities, ICE Customs figured it out. He didn't want to cause her grief, so he left, but they were in love. I mean, it was a cute little movie. Hey, Miami Airport Terminal closing early due to TSA shortage. Fire them, okay? Just get rid of the TSA. They're incompetent. They should have never existed. We need to be rid of them. There's so many other, other areas of the government that if we just fired these SOBs once and for all, that would be the end of it. We would be done with them. And to think that, uh, that we just keep all this dead wood on. You know, Prado's rule is that 20% of the people do all the work, 80% just, just come along for the ride, 80% of the sales force is unproductive. 20% are the true producers. It's the 80-20 rule. But you have Lutz's rule called the I-95 rule. And when it comes to government, 5% of the workers are effective. 95% are dead wood and should be disposed of. And that's in most agencies. I won't include the military. But look, I spent my whole life going to courthouses, going to regulatory agencies, government offices, you name it. And I'm telling you that most of those people are dead wood. For those of you who work for the government, I mean, I have a friend out there. He's been a FSN community member for years and years. He's a prison guard in a southern state, and he works hard. I'm not talking about you. You slouches, you goof-offs, you know who you are. The post office, perfect example. Incompetency reigns and they lose billions and billions of dollars. They shouldn't exist. Get rid of the post office. Give it to Jeff Bezos. I mean, hopefully he will make the post office more successful than his wife. Look, he's worth $150 billion. Under the law, she gets half. But the reality is, let me tell you how these celebrity divorces work. Uh, he will write her a check for 10 to $20 billion. That's the way it's going to work. She will never say another word. There will be a confidentiality clause. Evidently, he's been traveling all over the countryside chasing this uh, attractive woman he's been having an affair with. Hey, everyone is entitled to find their own happiness, but you should do it without hurting those people who care about you, hurting those people who love you and depend upon you. I'm not making any judgments on him. I'm just saying when you do that, you're going to hurt people. And look, anything you do, just like the Hippocratic Oath, the first order of business is do no harm. And 
you know, that goes with your relationships as well. You know, I recently had a close friend, not friends with him anymore. I'm not going to name names because that just isn't fair. It's my viewpoint. He's got his. Remember, there's three sides to every story. His side, her side, and the truth. So I did a lot for this person outside of business. I didn't really want to do business with him, but he just cried me a river and finally said, okay, I'll do, I'll help you out. And I think I did a great job. He thought otherwise, but rather than doing the right thing that any person, decent person would do, say, look, Carrie, I really appreciate your efforts. I know you did your best for me, but I'm going to do something different. Thank you so much for everything you've done. Rather than that, he just said, you didn't do a good job. You let me down and nothing could have been further from the truth. I turned this person a profit on all my efforts, but hey, that's his opinion. I was really uh, offended, hurt, more hurt than anything else. I'm over it now, but people are going to disappoint you in life. So you have a choice. Do you act like a jerk and never get close to anyone and never really pursue close relationships and friendships? Or do you take the risk and every now and then an idiot like this is going to come up and hurt you? And it's like that in love as well. So my feeling is, I don't know how to be anything except a really good friend. Like, for me, if you're a friend, then loyalty is it. What I should have said to this person is, blank, you have all the qualities of a dog except loyalty. And that is the truth. All the qualities of a dog except loyalty. But you know what? Anger is pointless. As uh, the book, uh, The Four Agreements says, don't take anything personally. You know, this person's a depressed character. They're just down on life, down on themselves. Me, I'm optimistic. It's like, if you, I was just having this conversation with a friend. If you don't believe in God, if you don't believe in what God can do for you and that your life is touched by God every step of the way, it's really hard to be optimistic. It's really hard to be happy. It's really hard to feel whole. It's really hard for you to, to just have a joyous life. And you can't let idiots, what I call energy vampires, the person just used me, that's what he did. Hey, that's all he knows. So I'm not going to feed that. All I'm going to do is say a couple prayers for him, that he finds happiness and contentment in his life. I'm not going to pray for him to drop dead or anything like that. It's silly. I just believe that the golden rule, you need to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And if you do that, you're going to get burned. And sometimes more often than you think you're going to get burned. But you keep doing it because you believe that there are certain values that transcend your petty feelings, your emotions, etc. So I'm just going to leave it at that and just tell you that we really need to come together as people and treat people as if the way you want it to be treated. You know, if I had hired him to do a job for me, and I wasn't happy with the job, I would have just said, hey, I know you gave it your best. It's just some things we just can't fix. Thank you so much for all your efforts and all your hard work. I know you worked hard on it. Nobody's perfect. Hey, but thanks. And I'll never forget what you've done for me. What's so hard about that? The same thing is like if you're having a party, how many times have you not been invited to a party? All right. And you get a little upset over it. it happened to me a number of times. And you know what my philosophy is about inviting people to my parties, to events that I have? Just remember this. No one ever got insulted by being invited, right? No one did. So remember that. No one ever got insulted by an invitation. And uh, as far as once they're at the party and where they got seated, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> but we won't go there because it just, it just doesn't matter. Um, you know, just be, re always remember, I mean, I saw this, Britt Hume said it a while ago, just remember that every person you ever meet has a struggle that you know, an internal struggle that you know absolutely nothing about. So be nice. And what does it kindness cost you? What does generosity of spirit cost you? It really costs you nothing. And you get so much back in return. When it works, it is a beautiful thing. I always invest my time, my efforts with all of my friends, 
I'll go to the mat for them. If you're a friend of mine, it's going to be a friend for life, generally. I have many, many friends for decades. My oldest friend, we've been friends for 55 years, and a couple other friends in the 30s and 40s, a couple of law school friends. You know, you can't put a price on those friendships. Anyway, I'm getting a little mushy. I never did a holiday, New Year's kind of discussion, but I just feel that certain things, when it comes to friends, you can't replace a good friend. When you lose a good friend, you lose a piece of yourself, and and you're never quite the same. Yes, you'll get over it. I mean, hell, you have people die in your life. You get over that. You will get over it, but there's a little piece of you that's never the same. You are never as whole as you were. And I just think that it's so, so important that you cherish your friendships and never forget that uh, there are people that love you, people who give you prayers and thought and happiness and joy in your life. You need more of them and less of what I call the energy vampires. Really, that's, that's what this is about. And hey, there's an article here from NPR, Nina Totenberg, or Tottenberg, saying Judge Ginsburg, Ginsburg has no remaining signs of cancer, will return to the Supreme Court. You know, like, come on, guys, who are you trying to kid? This is a second recurrence. She's had three bouts of cancer, and it's the type of cancer. She's not been a smoker. It's in her lungs. You're removed. So there's, on your lungs, there are, I believe, three lobes on the right side, two on the left, two on your left lung, three on your right lung. And she had a lobe taken out. Now, I've had very close relatives who passed on from lung cancer. I've been in Sloan Kettering more times than I ever want to think of. And I've seen the people on the lung cancer ward get a whole lung taken out, get a lobe taken out, just being, they go open them up, take a look, said, can't do anything, sorry, you're dead and sew them back up. And that surgery of getting a lobe taken out is like really major surgeries. Thoracic surgery, they got to go in, I guess, between your ribs and, and take it out, your ribs or your back. I don't know how they do it. Don't quote me on medical procedures. Please, please don't. But I will tell you that it's horrible surgery. The woman's 85 years old. They don't like to put really old people under on general anesthesia because they lose their marbles and this is serious serious surgery there's no way no way that she's recovered in three weeks i don't believe it for two seconds and this is uh, justice bernie ginsburg all right justice ruth bernie ginsburg and you know i don't wish her any ill hey she's a hell of a lawyer I didn't go to see that movie about her, can't stand it, can't stand her, but she's an amazing attorney. I won't say anything uh, to denigrate her legal skills. I mean, she's on the wrong end of every issue as far as I'm concerned, but we wish her a long, happy retirement, but trust me, she's just not going to be long for this world. Anyway, that is it for today. So questions, comments, email us, kl at kerrylutz.com. If you're listening on YouTube or a podcast, please subscribe, like, and share the podcast. It really helps me a lot, helps the show, helps get the message out to those of you who need it. Love what I'm doing. There's nothing else in the world I'd rather be doing than this. Hey, go over to jasonhartman.com. Take a look at the property listings. You're going to be amazed by what you see there. These investment properties all over the country in really great markets at really great prices, interest rates coming down, real estate, it's the way to go for many of you out there. Anyway, that's it for today. There's been another Triple Lutz Report. Kerry Lutz signing off. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.